In this video, I'm going to give you 10 tips for beginners just starting out in After Effects. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. I've been teaching After Effects for a few years now and using it for over 20. I'm pretty ancient. He's old, we're young, and that's life. <laughs> over the years, I've had students run into various problems which have tripped them up. Some things might seem obvious to experienced motion designers, but nothing's obvious when you're just starting out. So in this video, I've put together some tips to help you avoid making similar mistakes and maybe gently nudge you into some good habits. I actually set out to create a video that I'd want future students to watch before they start my course. Stop it! Stop it! Please! I beg you! But this is aimed at anyone out there who's either just starting to learn After Effects, or maybe you haven't even opened it yet. In a nutshell, the gist is, have your shit together. But watch me drag that out over 10 minutes. This isn't how to create your first animation. I cover that in the first lesson of the course, and there's plenty of videos out there for that. This is about workflow, and other tips which are hard to categorise. So yeah, pretty dry, unsexy tutorial. But trust me, it's stuff that you should know if you want to be taken seriously in the industry. Not that I'm taken seriously. This is a robbery. Do you believe this? Also, having your shit together helps free you up mentally to focus on the fun creative part. Oh, and stay tuned to the end for a bonus tip, which is the single most important thing you should bear in mind before you start animating in After Effects. Okay, if you've paid attention, let's get started. Tip one, be aware of your comp duration. I'll set my workspace to animation, so you should be looking at pretty much the same layout as me. One of the first things you'll do as a newbie is create a new composition. You might start adding keyframes and scrubbing through your timeline, and hey, it looks okay when you do that, but you've actually got a comp which is an hour long, so when you render it, it looks like this. So have a rough idea of how long your animation will be. If it's a logo animation, maybe 10 seconds, explain a video, maybe three minutes. Also, and this is very broad, but most moves and transitions I animate in After Effects are generally a second or under. So that's a good place to start when you're adding keyframes for the first time. Another tip is to minimize the number of keyframes. I've seen students with comps where they've got loads of keyframes, more than they need for what they're animating. And it's just a lot trickier to amend when you've got zillions of keyframes. But you'll want to constantly RAM preview to check your animation timing. There's more on that in this tutorial. Tip two, don't fuck with type. I've looked at Kernan in a previous tutorial, but briefly, Faux bold, don't. Find a typeface with bold options. Faux italic, ditto. Scale height, no. Scale width, no. If you want bold or italicized typefaces, find one with those options. Also, if you use these scale options, it doesn't default when you create a new type layer. So you might end up accidentally having distorted typefaces in a future project, which is totally fine if you're animating something like this. But if you do want to stretch text properly, one way is to convert it to shapes and do it like this. This is an animation that I did for a month of 15 minute animation challenges. You can view all the real time workflows in the link below and there's a project file there as well. Jesus, I'm really plugging myself in this video. Sorry, it's not always like this. Tip three, same for your project. I know, it sounds obvious. What is this shit? I had a student who was beavering away on their first animation and hadn't saved the file. Unsurprisingly, they lost their work. Or maybe they just hadn't done their homework. Hold on, that makes sense. Yep, they totally conned me. Anyway, save your project, turn on auto save, as this will be a lifesaver if your computer or After Effects plays up, and save your file into a folder structure, which brings us to tip four, work tidy. This is basically just being organized when you work. My God, how boring. It's not unique to motion design either. A chef would be berated for not keeping their station clean. Housekeeping chefs! Wait, anyone understand what he's saying? No, no, Housekeeping no, no, means no, you have to clean your stations because this place is no, no, gross. No, no. Having your together is a good habit to get into from day one. I talked briefly about it in my 10 tips for freelancing video. Have your shit together. But I'm not going to go into detail here. This is such an important area, I'm going to devote a whole video to it. So for now, I'll just direct you to Justin McClure's website. He's got a whole brand dedicated to the subject. And you can download the folder structure of certain professional web designers. Or if you're a student, grab mine from the link below. If you keep even your personal projects neat, labeled, and concise, they'll be far more useful and easy to draw from as assets when you need to call in your personal library of cheats, experiments, tests, and wins. Anyway, look out for more on this soon. Tip five. Keep it simple. One thing I see students doing a lot is biting off more than they can chew and trying to animate a long and or complex animation before they're ready to. Often it means the animation ends up unfinished or finished, but they lose motivation and they're not happy with the end result. I've done this myself plenty. Good animation takes time. This is one reason I set up my sister channel, The Video Shop Long Play, to show just how long animations can take. Well, me. Every time I sit down and use After Effects, it's a pride to in Siege that I'll never fully, t well, that I will fully tell you about because this channel, but you often have to problem solve and maybe adjust your expectations. In my case, I'm constantly facing down the limits of my ability. So I always tell students it's a good idea to keep their personal project short, sweet, and simple. Avoid 20 second long animations at least until you're confident with the basics. 
Aim for a few seconds, or even very quick one second animations that you can stitch together, such as animating your logo or a random shape. It doesn't take long for a handful of really nicely animated two to three second pieces to add up to a solid 30 second beginner showreel. Here's a few other tips for keeping things simple. Keep things centered in frame unless there's a design reason not to. Use Control Alt Home to center anchor point, and Control Home to center the layer in view. Try just using black and white to help focus on composition and timing. Avoid plugins, for now at least. Focus on keyframing and fundamentals. Tip six, pick a frame rate. I work mostly at 24 frames a second. If you're just animating type and graphics, you can pretty much choose your frame rate. But if you're importing footage or supplying for a specific medium, such as TV or cinema, you have to work to certain standards. Let's say you want to add some graphics to footage you've shot on your phone. If we import the footage and interpret it, we can see it's this frame rate. So that's what we need to work to. A good method is to just drag the footage onto the new composition icon, and that will create a comp with the same spec as the footage. You can always check your comp settings at any time by clicking Ctrl K. It is possible to convert frame rates, but we're not going to get into standards conversion in this video. That's a relief. I actually threw this question out on LinkedIn last week, as I realized I didn't know what others were doing in the industry. The takeaway seems to be that there's no single industry standard. People are working at one or a mixture of frame rates for a variety of reasons. But the responses were interesting. Here's one from David Katz, who let me quote him. For 3D stuff, smooth techie stuff, I found that 30 frames a second usually does the job. For 2D and specifically character animation, I prefer 12 frames a second or 15 frames a second. 12 frames a second also helps bring down file sizes for GIFs. This isn't something I considered before. I've animated on twos for character or retro animation, but using a high frame rate for smooth motion isn't something I've thought to do. I've learned something important today. So maybe have a mixture of frame rates depending on what you're animating or for whom. Perhaps something like this. Note these are all multiples of six, so you can put them all in the same showreel without having to alter the frame rates. If you want to animate at 30 frames a second, make your frame rates multiples of five. Maths. You can even mix frame rates within an animation or in the same scene, but we'll save that for a future tutorial. Tip seven, check your work. Easy one this. However, let me kick off by holding my hands up and embarrassing myself. The other week I did a small half day job for a new client and one of the renders I sent them was mute because I'd accidentally turned off the audio in After Effects. I didn't spot it when I was working because I was just tweaking the animation, but there's no way I would have missed it if I'd taken the time to check the export. So now I have a new client who thinks I'm lazy or incompetent. Don't you even care? And I probably wouldn't blame them for not using me again. As a teacher, I've had work submitted with all sorts of issues. Most of them understandable. They're learning. But some things don't require experience to spot. It's just about care and attention. Attention to detail is so important in motion design and design generally, obviously. For employers, being careless is a bit like being a knob. If you're amazingly talented, they'll tolerate it to a certain degree. But honestly, it's such an easy win not to be sloppy. So don't be me, in other words. Tip eight, export high res. One thing I've seen quite a few times from students is something like this. Everything looks okay in After Effects. So they export out a media encoder. And when they check their render, it looks like this. <laughs> what they thought was a white background is now black. Without going too inside a baseball, this is currently a known issue with Media Encoder, and I'll post a link to this article for those of you who want to know more. Adobe says it's best practice to add a solid colour to your comp, and this is something I've always recommended to students, and I do myself. But I'll go further and say that you should explore to ProRes, especially when you come to do client work. So without taking a massive detour into the pros and cons of various specs, I'd say this will do you just fine as a beginner or student. Pretty much every client I can remember working with has accepted MP4s for approval, and often, I even end up sending them an MP4 with a high bitrate for final delivery. But I always have a ProRes 422 ready to send if they want it. And I suggest all your personal project exports should be in this format. I'm still like... I not belong, dear. I'm not an expert, but my limited understanding is that Premiere is better equipped to edit with ProRes rather than MP4. I think it's something to do with how MP4s are compressed. Not to mention, if you edit with MP4s, then export an MP4, you're compressing twice. Another reason it's a good idea, I've had projects in the past where time was tight, and as the project got bigger and more complex, the render time increased to an hour or more. And then the client wanted the final ProRes immediately after approving the MP4. If you only render MP4, you'd have to say, oh, sorry, I need another hour or so to export a high res for you. But exporting a ProRes and then making an MP4 from that only takes seconds. Tip nine, switch comp resolution. This is this drop down here, which changes the resolution of your comp window. If you ever end up with a render that's smaller than you expect, there's a good chance that you rendered at current settings 
and had your comp set to half or low quality. Without doing an excruciating deep dive into render settings, I'd recommend setting your default render settings to best. You might not know what quality to have while you're working, so here's another very rough subjective guide. You should always check what your final render will look like by setting the resolution to full at some point. The more elements you composite in your scene, the more issues you might run into, especially when you get into keying or rotowing footage, or using non-vector artwork. There are some issues which just won't show up at a lower resolution, or if you're adding effects, such as noise or glows. Setting it to full quality at 100% will be exactly how it will look when you export, so it's good practice to check it while you're building your scene, and I'd recommend doing a final check before you export. But when you're animating, you don't necessarily need to have it set to high res. And in a lot of cases, it will probably speed things up to drop the resolution. You may also want to turn off any effects which don't affect the animation. It'll depend on the speed of your computer and what you're working on and your level of patience. Must go faster. A simple shape or text animation will probably be okay. But as soon as you start adding lights, expressions and effects or use a C4D renderer, things might slow down. So that's when you might want to drop it to half, or third or quarter resolution. Lastly, a handy tip is to use the tilde key. It solos whichever window your cursor is over, so it's good for checking your scene in your comp window, and you can use Ctrl plus or minus to zoom in and out. Tip 10. Shortcuts. Well, I gave you a couple just now, and if you want to be super pedantic, you could argue that shortcuts isn't actually a tip. They're definitely important for speeding up your workflow, but the best way to pick them up is to slowly incorporate them as you go along. So rather than give you a whole list here, I've scattered them throughout the video. I'm not already out doing a future video on them, but in the meantime, here's an extended clip from Die Hard with a Vengeance. And a fun game to play when you meet a motion designer is to ask them what their favourite shortcut is. Maybe that's why people avoid me at meetups. Bonus tip. Don't animate a bad design. I think this is the single most important thing you should bear in mind before you start animating. I always tell students I'd rather that they had a really nice design with the most basic animation, even a slow scale up, than a poor design that they've spent ages lovingly animating, but all we can see is the design letting it down. If you don't consider yourself a good designer, and I don't particularly, look for people to collaborate with and try to learn even basic fundamentals. Look out for more design discussion on this channel. And that's it, my 10 tips for beginners just starting out in After Effects. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.